Welcome to another in our series of Great Chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today is from the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, the birth of Samuel. There was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephraphathite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. But I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, so that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and dwell there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. A man was put on the spot when he was asked about his wife's favorite flower. He hesitated momentarily, and then it came to him with a big smile of satisfaction when he proudly said, I do believe she uses Pillsbury all-purpose flour. Another woman walked into the room where her husband was flipping through the channels, and he, she asked what was on the television. He quipped, it appears to be dust. And that's when the argument started. Another wife demanded that her husband take her out to someplace expensive. 
he drove her to the gas station and filled up the car with gas. And that didn't end well either. I say those to show that men can be rather insensitive. In fact, they don't even know that they're being insensitive, and it makes it all the more worse. In our chapter today, we have two men in some ways fall into that category. The first is Elkanah, the husband of Hannah. He also was the husband of Penina. The law did allow for multiple wives. However, we have seen in the accounts previously in Scripture where more than one wife has caused not a little friction. Sarah and Hagar, Rachel and Leah and her handmaidens, Billah and Zilpah. So Elkanah was within his right to take another wife, but he was not attentive enough to see the friction between Hannah and Penina. In typical fashion, he reacts, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? And then we have Eli, the priest of the Lord, at the tabernacle at Shiloh. As he sees Hannah praying, he quickly concludes she is drunk, not realizing she was pouring her heart out to the Lord. But Hannah was a sensitive woman and spiritual. We might not grasp the import of the situation with Hannah being barren, but it was often a heartbreaking situation when a woman was unable to bear children in the days of antiquity. And those of modern times can attest to this, who have themselves been unable to conceive a child. As a man writing this, I can assure you I cannot fathom the feelings a couple must have, and especially a woman who is childless. I do know that such cases have been recorded in Scripture for our perusal. Sarah, the wife of Abram. Rebekah was also unable to bear children until the Lord opened her womb. Rachel also. Hannah's prayer is heard by the Lord, and he answers that heartfelt plea, and she bears a son, Samuel. She has also made a vow to the Lord. Actually, two vows. First, that if she has a son, that he will be given to the Lord. Second, that he will be a Nazarite. Now, there is a stipulation in the law that if a wife makes a vow, her husband can nullify that vow on the day that he hears of it. We read this in Numbers chapter 30, verses 3 through 8. Elkanah was within his right to say no to Hannah for having given up his son to serve the Lord. But he doesn't. The time comes when Hannah must take her son. Elkanah, with the utmost tenderness and forethought, does not force her to take young Samuel before his time and allows Hannah to keep him until he is weaned. Presumably, that age is about three years. In the days of Hezekiah, this directive was given that helps us fix an approximate time frame. In 2 Chronicles chapter 31, and verse 16, Except those enrolled by genealogy, males from three years old and upward, all who entered the house of the Lord as the duty of each day required for their service according to their offices by their divisions. She fulfills her vow and takes Samuel to Eli. Now, hard as I may try, I can only see this through 21st century eyes, through selfish eyes at that. In my mind, I secretly say, no, Hannah, don't make that vow. You have waited and waited for this child. You have wept and suffered without him. And now you have to part with him and give him up all of those precious moments you would have had with him. But what do I know? I am just as insensitive as Elkanah and Eli. I wonder if her husband could appreciate the depth of such a sacrifice she has made. And I wonder if Eli knew what mothers gave up when they brought their young children to Shiloh to serve. Maybe they did. But one thing is for sure, God certainly knew. He knew long before he opened her womb the heart she had for the Lord. The writer of Hebrews would put forth a maxim that has always been true and always will be true. In Hebrews 13, verse 16, we read, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. If you peek into the next chapter, you will discover the reward the Lord gives for Hannah's dedication. In chapter 2 and verse 21, Indeed, the Lord visited Hannah, and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. 
And the boy Samuel grew in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Samuel grew. He grew into one of the greatest of all the prophets, so much so that the writer of Hebrews mentions him by name in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets. And Peter would mention him among the prophets as well in Acts 3.24. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these days. Samuel holds the distinction of being the last of the judges and the first of the prophets. He would anoint two kings over Israel, Saul and David. And to think, it all began with the prayer and dedication of a mother. Have you thought of the prayers you have uttered and taken the time to give thanks for the Lord having answered them? Have you considered the power of those words that rise up like incense to the very presence of the Lord there on high? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters of the Bible.